Surya Niva never to be silent whenever human beings endure suffering and humiliation. We must take sides. Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. Silence and courage the tormentor, never the tormentor. Sometimes we must interfere. When human lives are endangered, when human dignity is in jeopardy, national brothers and sensitivities became the highlight. Whenever men and women are prosecuted because of their race, religion, or political views, that place must, at the moment, become the center of the universe. So this is our pop-up Holocaust Museum. This is our librarian, Vicky Salter. This is Doris Sontimer. Hi, it's nice to meet you. So we have this display that she has made. Do you want to talk a little bit about it? These are displays that will help continue the conversation from what you have presented to the high school here and to continue throughout the, the weeks to come. So we have here witnesses from the past. These are um, survivor stories. And then we also have rescuers and resistance, people that have um, stood up against Nazis, and that's their stories here. Yes. We, those are Jewish biographies, gypsies, Jehovah Witness, and political prisoners. So we tried to highlight a variety of the different prisoners that were in the different camps. I think every story is a life uh, story. Michael Gruenbaum yeah, yeah, is yeah, really yeah. Uh, a story very hard because he's alive. He's 18, 8 years old and he's doing and traveling and, 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 and walking. Telling the story. And telling yeah. He's written six books. Um, yeah. And he was five years old when he was taken into camp. Um, and grew up. And did you see the thing about the eggs? They had three eggs in how many years? In two and a half years. Two and a half years, two and a half years they ate three eggs total. That's what they were going to And they paid for the eggs. Yeah, they, they, they smuggled and them. Yeah, the and gave them to them. Yeah. So, but every, every history, I think, um, when, when we spoke about the Holocaust and we spoke about six million persons are six million personal histories. Everyone has yeah. his own his Every story. story matters, yeah. She's, uh, one of the things I've learned, I, and I feel like I've known Doris for a long time, but I've only actually, we've only known each other for four or five days. She's very, I, I think she's very concerned or, 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 or proud of the idea that she's making more stories and that none of them are more important or less important. It's just important that these be carried on. And the other thing, and Mr. Lusk kind of captured it as well, is that this is how you fight this kind of thing, is by sharing and looking back. And so she's very she's a brilliant researcher. But the most important thing here are you, the young people. You are the future, the generation that can build a world without hate, without discrimination and racism. Don't be silent in the face of injustice. injustice. Follow the words of Ellie Lisa. Thank you very much for having me.
Good afternoon, Gettysburg. I'm Bryce Bladen. And I'm Sydney Davis, and you're watching The Warrior Wire. So, as you see right there, there was a clip. Um, one of Mr. Sollentimer's relatives, uh, Dory Sollentimer, came to our school as a guest speaker and explained a little more about the Holocaust and how her parents went through it. And it was just, it was very inspiring and very emotional. Just, it, it, like Mr. Lust said, it wasn't hard to understand because of that, uh, the accent she had. It was hard to understand because of the, the terrible uh, incident that happened, which was the Holocaust. Yeah, it's very unimaginable. But on a lighter note, we're going to go to a band clip, kind of just highlighting the band um, that one of our videographers, Dan, made. So let's go check that out. like 16 seconds. We want to see you at the holiday concert. Thank you, Tan, for that very, very short advertisement. Uh, make sure you guys come to the holiday market tomorrow, the 8th, uh, Saturday. Make sure you be there. And go to the holiday concert. Um, we also put together a clip. Uh, it's, very, it's new to the Warrior Wire. It's called People and Pilots Getting Pancakes. Kind of like a play off of um, what the old Warrior Wire crew used to do with students and sedans getting slurpees. So let's go check that out. This is a 2008 Honda Pilot in furnished maroon metallic, a leather interior, and over 400,000 miles. This luxury vehicle features a V8 horsepower motor and a freshly dented side thanks to a tree in my way. It'll serve as the perfect vehicle to pick up Mary Heaton as we interview her about her recent achievements in speech and debate. Today, we're interviewing Mary Heaton on her recent success in coming in first place in the speech and debate tournament and winning $15,000 towards her college. But first, I'm gonna need some help. Why don't we go get my good pal and Warrior Wire crew member, Sydney Davis. Hey Sid, you want to help me film the first episode of People and Pilots Eating Pancakes? Yeah, sure, I'll be right there. Hey Gettysburg, in this episode of People and Pilots Getting Pancakes, we are interviewing our own Mary Heaton. Hey everybody. So, Connor, you want to ask me the first question? Absolutely, Mary. Thank you for coming with us to go get some pancakes. So, uh, we heard recently that you took place in a speech and debate debate and you won fifteen thousand dollars of scholarship money is that correct uh yeah that is really impressive how do you feel yeah um, it was kind of like a crazy moment and i don't think it really hit me at first yeah but then like when everyone was coming up to like congratulate me afterwards i think that's when it kind of started to like i realized just like how crazy that is <laughs> hi it's insane so what uh, what part of speech and debate was it that you participated in? Oh, I'm sorry, what category? Um, so I do a category called Original Oratory, which is kind of like a persuasion speech. I write it myself, it's an eight to 10 minute speech. Um, and then I deliver it and yeah. Wow. Do you find it hard to come up with ideas to write for those speeches? Um, not really, um, every year I go to um, a um, like, Summer Institute um, at Bradley University where the tournament took place and they kind of have um, ideas for you to kind of pull from when you're trying to write your speech. That's cool. That's excellent. Now, uh, Mary, I know that, you know, before big sports games, sometimes people listen to a song and uh, I was just wondering, do you have any music that you play before you're getting ready to debate like off there on the stage? warm-up type of thing. I don't know if there's any one particular song, really. Um, Honestly, it's just like me kind of running through my speech because you don't want to forget it because it's a memorized speech. So. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> a whole eight minutes is memorized? That's uh, crazy. Yeah. Wow. That has so how, impressive. So how long does it take for you to memorize each speech before that? Um, so that one probably took me about a day to like get down, but like not without any flaws or whatever. And then probably like a week of delivery coaching with... um some of the staff members and coaches at the Summer Institute that I go to.
team hug. Running. Um, what do you do on track? Um, I do the um, 100 meter and um, I do a long jump. Ooh. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, Mary, thank you so much for joining us so we can ask you a few questions. Congratulations. That is a huge honor and a huge achievement. And um, let's send it back to the studio with Bryson Bennett. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that clip. It was really, like, so much fun to film, so. All right, Gettysburg, that's all we have for you this week on The Warrior Wire. I'm Bryce Bladen. And I'm Sydney Davis. And you're, and you're watching, watching The, the Warrior, Warrior Wire. Wire. Oh my god.